guys here, Uri Shibata san coming from Japan. Um, he will work on this small tree, you know. Um, no, he gets, we give him two days. We want to do something else in the show. Sometimes we have very good trees and um, they are not possible to finish in three or four hours. So that's why Uri uh, Shibata san will work two days on this one. So the fish and finishing will be tomorrow from this one. I got the maybe small little yeah. Uh, actually, I don't know right this moment. What, what, where is the front? I cannot say which front I'm going to choose. But before I start this tree, I better uh, I better curve and take off the part where is that already so up uh, let's see the vein where it is still uh, still alright so uh, what can I do? <laughs> maybe past it uh, good okay <laughs> <laughs> Uh, it's basically, uh, like I say, that uh, uh, this is uh, not certain where the front is. I said a little bit earlier, um, it's not certain where the live veins are, so you're going to have to do some carving uh, in order to figure out where the, the live veins are. But, um, but looking at just the, the tree initially, this side, uh, we've clearly got a lot of very interesting shari, a lot of interesting deadwood. Um, so this side would kind of uh, immediately uh, look as though it's the, the front of the tree. However, this area here is very, very straight. Uh, and so if it was possible, uh, over a long sort of period of time, it would be uh, a very good idea to, to try and air layer it, uh, or air layer it work, maybe to root graft, uh, in order to sort of separate the tree around about here, and just use the top section. In that case, that would make a fantastic tree. あの、この車両を出した後のことで考えます。あの、スペースにワンポスビリティスタイルのストリートウィッチ uh, then this, uh, this lower trunk section would not be capable uh, of holding the top section of the tree up, and so it would be impossible to, to use it as a bonsai. Uh, so basically, if it's not possible to, to air layer it, which we're not going to be able to do today, uh, it's going to be a case of um, exposing the deadwood down here and then giving, giving it um, uh, a sort of second uh, consideration as to, as to what would be possible. Uh, but so for today, probably the most of the, the job will be uh, just exposing the, the deadwood. Uh, there will be some uh, heavy machinery uh, going on, so it might be a little bit loud, so I apologise in advance for this. Uh, but that's pretty much uh, the, the main job for today.
Okay, so having removed those now, the eye definitely now moves uh, towards the, 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 the right hand side here, yeah? because um, it's not being taken off by, the, by, by those um, by those genes. So not only has it improved by allowing us to see the, uh, the natural deadwood at the back, it's also improved the movement of the, uh, uh, of the trunk. And uh, so when we're faced with a situation like this where we've got lots and lots of genes, it's not simply a case that the more deadwood we have, the better. Okay, some deadwood is going to accentuate the tree and some of it is going to detract from the tree. Those two pieces of deadwood there, no matter how, how good we carve them, uh, or you know, how, how beautiful they could have become, they would never have uh, accentuated the, the movement of the tree because they were going off in the, in the wrong direction. And so when it comes to, to, to working on these, these genes, you should be doing exactly the same thing uh, as you would do considering the position of branches. Okay, so when we go through branch removal, we're thinking about you know, which direction is this tree going, uh, is this branch going in, uh, considering the space uh, and, and things like that. Uh, and so removing these genes as we're going along, working up the, the, the trunk, um, should be exactly the sort of same process. Um, so when it comes to working on your, your trees uh, the next time, sort of bear that in mind as you're doing the, the dead wood work. So he basically thinks um, that uh, this kind of dead wood here that we see here, where it has had uh, many, many years, hundreds of years possibly, of uh, natural elements working on it, so wind, rain, snow, ice, uh, all these kind of elements which have been working on it in order to create this kind of character. Seeing that uh, provokes much more of a, a, a sort of emotional response in people than seeing uh, the deadwood that man has created. And so wherever possible, always look to try and accentuate these natural characteristics. However, we uh, one of the reasons, I mean, in doing bonsai, uh, bonsai is essentially a kind of a creating something which is artificial. Um, we want to, to wire the tree. We want to style it in such a way. Uh, we want to make it look uh, clean and pretty by the uh, the end of these two days. Uh, and so. The, the difficulty is in sort of balancing the, that desire and to, to make it look like a pretty bonsai, but yet keeping that natural character um, that's going to uh, evoke an emotional response. It's going to make it look as though man hasn't been working on it, like Tiger hasn't been working on it for the, for the past, for the next two days. And so it's about trying to achieve that balance. It's very, very difficult, and that's the challenge that that we face as bonsai professionals, as bonsai enthusiasts. How far do we go? When do we stop?
kort 11. Nu 9. Ja, doe hem op. Ja, we hebben het even En dat is going to continue to be thinned down. So it's, it's a case of not keeping it just for the sake of it. So the techniques that we're using is simply to try and tear away uh, the wood as much as possible in order to uh, expose the grain. And so looking at it from this side, this is going to be plenty interesting enough. Uh, there's, uh, there's enough uh, interesting movement uh, in this central section. And there's enough power in the truck, there's enough character within this, this side uh, to, to, to make a, a very wonderful looking tree. And so it's a case of not, not really being seduced by uh, this one major character point on this side, all of this natural gin. Uh, and dead wood. Not being seduced by this, but uh, balancing all of those factors up uh, and working with that somewhere in there at the front uh, and then doing his best to, to, to sort of make this central section much, much more interesting. I'm going to turn the Yeah? Wow. Uh, so either of those two fronts would, uh, would be possible. We discussed this a lot yesterday, so if there are people here for the first time, uh, we discussed the, the, the pros and the cons uh, of using each side as the front uh, in terms of uh, the lower trunk movement. Um, and the, the visibility of the live vein uh, and also the arrangement of the deadwood. Uh, and as Tiger said, after having spent three or four hours this morning carving and uh, finishing off the deadwood, um, the, that, that section of the work is now finished and we have a much clearer idea of what is possible and what would, be, what would work. But yet it's still not 100% certain which side to make the front. So. So looking at the, the positive points from this side, um, what's good about this, this side as a, as a front is the fact that we get to see the movement of the live vein. Uh, so we see it coming up from the soil, we have movement in here, but we do have that relationship between the deadwood and, uh, and the live vein down at the bottom. As we move up the trunk, we start to see a lot more movement in the live vein. Okay, it's, it's more of a rounded trunk feel. It feels a little bit more powerful with the live vein. Uh, but then once we get up into the top section, we have this very interesting movement of the live vein, which interweaves in between the dead wood. And so this, uh, particularly the lower trunk section, uh, from, from, from the base of the tree up to about here, it doesn't feel quite so straight as it does on the other side. There's slight movement, um, both in the, tr in, the, in the trunk itself, but also we have a little bit of movement in, this, uh, in the live vein there, so it doesn't feel quite so straight as it does on the other side. So we'll look at the other side, the good points and the bad points. Hello, so from this side, we, we also have the, uh, the live vein, uh, the, the connection between the top of the tree, the live vein, down into the soil. So we can see that. It's not quite as big as on the other side. Um, but what we, the, the, the biggest plus point for this side is, is sort of from here upwards, where we have this uh, incredible, um, fantastic sort of natural deadwood and all this movement in here which uh, is very sort of um, representative of the, the natural environment in which this tree would have grown. So the big problem sort of, uh, looking at it from this side is, the, is the, the difference between the straightness in the bottom of the trunks. It's very sort of long and straight and there's not a tremendous amount of movement compared to what happens above here. 
So there's a bit of a disconnect. The, the, the two parts are almost telling two different stories. And so if we really wanted to, to utilize this and accentuate that, then we discussed yesterday about the possibility of taking an air layer in this kind of position. Uh, but seeing as he uh, has very little uh, experience of, of working with movies, um, I'm not 100% certain if it is possible to take an air layer or to root graft into, into Mugo Pine in order to separate that top section. Uh, it's not something that he would be particularly comfortable with going forward within the future. ということで、あの裏も表も決められません。And so, because of all these factors, he still just he can't decide the front or the back of the tree. じゃどうするか。So in this sort of situation where he can't decide the front or the back, what do we do? 頑張ってあのどちらでも見れるように作りますから。And so what we'll try and do is make a tree, make the tree structured so that it could be viewed equally from either side. Uh, and so he's going to start working, uh, and uh, he's going to begin by um, um, raffiaing this branch. Uh, some of the other branches may need raffia, uh, but this one is definitely going to be manipulated quite heavily. Um, so it will be lifted up, it will be bent down, bent around, lots of movement put into it. Uh, and so um, that needs uh, the raffia protection. And so, if this was the if this was the front of the tree, on this side, uh, what would happen? Uh, what's going to happen with this branch is that it's going to be brought down into the, into this sort of area as a sort of flying character branch. Uh, and looking at the tree from this side, this could could become a, a back branch. And so that was one of the reasons why it wasn't immediately removed. But we've got plenty of branches up in the top that can be brought down to become back branches. And so, bearing in mind this idea that we'd like to try to, to make a, uh, a tree that could be viewed from both sides, that branch is going to be removed or <laughs> has been removed. Um, and so, he's, <laughs> he's not cut it off because he doesn't want to wire it. <laughs> not for that reason. So what he wants to do is to, is, is to create the tree in the, in the correct way, uh, create a tree that's going to improve over the future, um, rather than something that's going to look really nice and pretty now. Create something that in five years' time, in ten years' time, is going to have a structure and is going to improve <coughs> rather than deteriorate because it's been made in a, with a, a short-term goal in mind.
All the apprentices that come out of uh, Mr. Kimura's garden are renowned for their technical ability as well as their artistic ability. And Tiger is no exception. Okay, so we're going to just turn it around and have a look at the other side. All cleans backwards now. So if we were going to look at this as the front, uh, then what we'd be looking to, to do is to, 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 to pull these branches in a little bit more inside the tree uh, and look to develop these buds, make it a little bit stronger, get some ramification down in here and fill this, uh, this foliage pad up. Uh, this side of the tree, with all the, the dead wood and the, the movement and the, just the, just the fantastic shari in there, it's just uh, it's very impressive. This is the side that he, he likes. So we uh, just about made it in time, uh, thanks to the sterling efforts of Koji uh, Hiramatsu, and uh, I also played a little part in it. Um, and uh, we've got it into some shape. Uh, it's, uh, the, the first styling is there, we've got a general idea of, of where we want to go, and that could be either side of the depending on how things develop, how whoever takes up charge of this tree. Uh, but this is just the, the first step and what happens next is the most important thing uh, in terms of the aftercare and, the, and how it's uh, grown for this year. With the branches that the tree had today uh, and with the, the future of the tree in mind, uh, it's been designed so that it could be viewed from either side. However, if we wanted to make this the front. If we wanted this side to be the front, we would want a back branch to sort of be growing in here. Okay? If we made that side the front, then we would want a back branch sort of in there. A branch just to stop the eye from escaping through off to infinity. Unfortunately, we don't have those branches, but they can be grown, things can be dropped down, and they can be developed. So that's something that will happen over the, uh, in the future of the tree. The tree would be perfectly fine without those branches, but that's something to, to think about it over the long term future of the tree. What do you think? Beautiful. 